Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like the clock, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have the fantastic, fabulous Joseph Boric with us today. And we're starting a new series that we have. There's been a lot of talk about uh, the Seattle franchise, the crack in. <laughs> the name comes... Oh my gosh, what's the the mayor first comes out and said, let's get cracking. Remember what I said about all these cheesy little things that are going to, I didn't like the name. I'm one of the few people that didn't like it. I get it. I get it. And it sounds like the Seattle people wanted it. And if that's what they wanted, more power to you. Wonderful. Good for you. Awesome. It's you're the, you're the ones paying the bill, paying the money to go see the game. So whatever you want, I'm cool with. Uh, but, uh, there's a lot of podcasters out there or YouTubers <laughs> doing uh, early who's going to be on the Seattle Kraken team and stuff like that. And I watch some of them and I'm like, man, that team's not likely going to look like that at all. So to me, it just seemed like very fluffy to me. I understand it. It's kind of fun. But we here at Pearl of Wisdom Industries and uh, – with our Philadelphia broadcast, we like to get into in-depth, logical talk about hockey. And that's what we're here and what's what we're doing. So we're going to do it. And this is going to be a continuing series, I believe. We're going to go down probably every team and maybe go back to some teams up until that Seattle time. Because it is a very important time in NHL, what, what will be NHL history and NHL future of how it's going to affect each team, who may go there, and what each organization is looking at when giving up a player. And what's Seattle looking at? What do, what do we think Seattle is going to be looking at? Is it going to be a little different than their approach, like Vegas's approach? Uh, I personally think so already as it is. But the first team we're going to look at is one that is, the reason why we're looking at it is they're very deep. They have a lot to do in preparation for the Seattle uh, expansion. And they could end up losing a very good player if they don't play their cards very right. Um, so Colorado, uh, the Seattle franchise is probably going to have a lot of leverage going in. Um, I'm sure things will change. And we'll even talk about some ways that things could change to protect themselves here. So let's look at... The Colorado Avalanche, Joseph, one of the finest hockey minds I've come across. Joseph Borak here. Uh, first of all, do you have anything you'd like to let people know that you're doing in the near future here, Joseph, as well? Um, well, of course, for uh, as you know, for the Flyers Nitty Gritty team, for the Flyers, um, we're doing a lot now video-wise on our YouTube as well as um, on our website for the hockey coming back. And then... Um, for baseball and hockey coming back, the other site I write for Pub Sports Radio, uh, we also do a heck of a lot for um, because a lot of stuff came back. So I'm going to start writing different things down there as well. And then True Philly Sportscast, mm -hmm. Philadelphia Sportscast, that Pirlo is always a kind, wonderful guest on for us. So um, that's, a, that's the only other thing. But no, I'm excited to talk about the Avalanche. The Avalanche are one of the more interesting teams uh, with how they play this uh, coming into it, especially, like we said, we might go back to teams next year because we don't know what the hell is going to happen from a year now. Some guy that looked off this year might have a career year next year. So then you're going, oh, well, if the Avalanche have money, so if they still feel they don't need to keep him, they'll probably just let him go and get maybe something back even since he had a career year. So that's why it's so interesting to examine this a year out. And then, as you said, make it a series and potentially go back to it later because Rubauer, like we talked about before the podcast, was a little off this year. Say he has a career year as a 40, 35, 40 game goalie next year behind Pavel Francois. That hires his uh, value, obviously. So it's going to be interesting, but <clears throat> I love talking about these different teams. And Colorado is one of the most fun teams to talk about. Uh, Bednar and everybody's done such a good job up there early with those guys. Uh, even guys haven't performed to their peak, you hope, and you've still been a great team. When guys haven't got to as quick as you hope they got to their ceiling, got to their ceiling. So that's when you know you have great coaching and management and you've still been able to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They've got a great team there. They've built a great team. Joe Sackick has done incredible stuff, with, like the Duchesne trade and a 
how patient he was and all of that. In doing so, they've got a very deep team. Right now, if you don't know, Seattle, our teams have an option of collect of protecting seven forwards and four defense or three defensemen with one goaltender, or they can protect four forwards, four defensemen, one goaltender. You have to have one goaltender who's played a, a certain amount of games. Uh, I think it was something like 35 games or something like that available to, uh, to the Seattle franchise and every team. There are certain teams that they don't have to protect if they don't have two years per, uh Pro, pro experience, they have to protect players that have no movement clauses in their contract, mm -hmm. which amazingly Colorado has few of. Uh, the, the, so far from what I, and you can tell me differently, they're looking at the likelihood is they have to protect McKinnon and Land, or they, they, sorry, they don't have to protect McKinnon, but they do have to protect McKinnon. McKinnon does not have a no trade clause, which I find absolutely amazing. At six million three, this guy doesn't have a no trade clause. Pretty cray cray. Like it shows oh, you wait a minute. Amazing. Yeah, I, I was trying to think for him because I thought he had one of those quirky contracts. Uh, I just clicked on him. For the expansion draft, by then he would have a no. This is actually the final year of his contract without a, without a modified NTC. Because looking at cap friendly on my computer, because I wanted to make sure it says starting 2020-21, player submits, and he has a pretty good one too, because submits a list of 19 teams he cannot be traded to. Well, or, that he can, right? or, or he can be traded to. I mean, he lit, So he submits a list of so. He's going oh. to tell them everybody he can be traded to, basically. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, we, so, don't, we don't need to worry about McKinnon being traded. Yeah. Anymore. So after this year, I don't think he's going to say, oh, yeah, I love Colorado. Let me just go all the way across. Well, not all the way, but half of the way across the country to Seattle and play in a completely different market. <laughs> so. Yeah, I guess Ranton and later on has one of those, too. But as yeah, of right now, they don't kicks have in after the, Does his kick in before or after the um, – expansion this kicks in after the expansion after after yeah. after so, so they they're gonna have... they're gonna protect ranton and mckinnon landis god Kadri, i believe jt comfer probably andre burakovsky and um, probably andre burakovsky and i think they'll re-sign valerie nichushkin almost certainly they've got the cap space to do it i think nichushkin would be next and that would leave as forwards junis donskoy Matt Culvert, Matt Nieto, Tyson Jost, and Ladislav Kamenov. Bellamar, but they're not taking Bellamar, but as noteworthy names that they would possibly be looking at. If they only protect three, now, you, you can expound upon this, but as of right now, Eric Johnson has, an, uh, has a no-movement clause. So they're not going to be able to, they'd have to convince him to waive it. So as it stands... They can pick three of Gerard, Graves, Makar, uh, Zadaroff, and yeah, and and so that they would basically. Oh, sorry, they'd have to take Johnson, and then two of the three of Makar, Graves, Gerard, or Zadaroff, and then they can choose between Franco, Franco. South and uh, Grubauer. Unless they take one less forward, but I don't think they're going to do that to take an extra defenseman with their forward. Board. Yeah, uh, then they would be leaving themselves a lot of big names out yeah, there. They so, would be leaving Comper or somebody like that potentially. Exposed. So we're in a difficult spot. It's a possibility that Ryan Graves is going to be left out there. Sam Gerrard or, uh, like you said, if they only do four forwards, then you're looking at leaving guys like JT Comfer, and I know they love JT Comfer. I do too. Yeah, I would not Don want JT Comfer or Don Sky or Burakovsky, yeah. Andre Burakovsky or Nachushkin. I mean, those, none of those guys you really want to go. So let's play devil's advocate. I'll kind of play Seattle. You kind of play Colorado. What do you think? What What are you planning on doing here? As the season starts, some of these guys you could trade for picks throughout the year too. Is there any guys you'd think about trading 
so you get something back for him so you don't have to keep him? Like, what do, you, what do you think? What are you looking here if you're Colorado? Let's say you do what Colorado probably will do next year and have a really good season. Uh, you know, probably going to make the playoffs. Is there any guys that you'd be like, okay, I'm going to let you go because we know we're going to lose you and stuff like that. Let's let's play devil's advocate here. Well, where, 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 what would you do? Well, since we also talked about the amount of cap space Colorado has, for, even though they have the contract of Johnson at six, um, they still have cap space coming in the next year. You're probably going to sign some more forward since they love, and like you said, and I also do as well, the way that JT Comper plays, and he's only 25. I think you're the odd man out to trade is Don Schooley. Uh, Don Schooley's a great player. They love what he's able, been able to do up there, but he'll be going on uh, 29, going on 30 uh, at that, coming into that season with the first year with Seattle. So I would think just based off of age wise, if Urikoski continues to play solid for you. He's also 25 now. He would be 26, so going on 27 at that point. It would just make um, Donskoy, I think, the odd man out. I do think Donskoy is a guy, though, that as an odd man out for Colorado is a guy that could fit in greatly as a good two-way forward for someone like Seattle because if, if there's a lot of signees with the great cap we're not going to need Don Schooley. So Don Schooley is going to be buried in the lineup, and it's just going to become almost like how Heineen went over to a different team who was on Boston. Like Some guys eventually just get buried in a lineup. Uh, it might become the same thing with um, the guy on um, the uh, guy on uh, the Capitals as well. I'm blanking on his name now. We were talking about him before the podcast. But, um, you talk talking Burakoski? Like no, when he went from no, the uh, – oh, the, uh, oh. Hathaway. Guy, yeah, half the way on the Capitals, too, if he gets better. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, I just feel that they're probably good. I think Don Schooley is the guy that is going to be good for them because he's another guy like half the way gets buried in a lineup. Uh, he would project probably better on a, if he played on a, I don't think a first line, but a second line he could play on for Seattle. That would be the forward I would think they would pick because – Nachuskin, obviously, they'll probably look at, but I think they're going to give him a pretty good contract. They'll protect him, um, and they'll do something there. Uh, Forward-wise, I would say the best if you if they don't if it's, if he's not traded in season for picks because that's a high possibility for the value of a player he is, especially to a contender um, to get some good uh, value uh, later round picks or a later round first, potentially, if they really want his services. Uh, Don Scully, um, he's a guy that you might trade in season. If you don't do that, though, you might be able to make a move if he has a great season, too, to give him to Seattle if they really like him as a player. Because he's an underrated uh, player in the league as well. Um, well he played for guy. San Jose, and he came yeah. over, and he, he did pretty well for Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, he found his niche. That's he why he's on great. Because uh, nobody watches uh, on the East Coast. Nobody pays attention. Even the Central. Like, San Jose is a good hockey team, usually. Not recently, but usually. Um, and they are not paid attention to throughout the coast, though. So nobody knew how solid of a player he was until on, like, this coast, when people pay attention a little bit more to Colorado with the time difference. He went to Colorado, and also they're one of the best teams in the league, so people naturally pay attention. Where... Now people are like, oh, this kid's actually a pretty – this guy's actually a pretty solid a third liner, can play up on the second line when you need him, uh, can play wherever you need him, kind of like a Swiss Army knife. Oh, uh, we need – you know, we need you to play here tonight. Oh, now we need you to play here. Now we need you to play – it's like, oh, okay, I got you. Uh, that's very valuable, I think, asset for an expansion team as well because you're not going to have a set line. You're, you're a damn expansion team. So you're going to be coming in and fill it, figuring it out and feeling it out. Jonas Donsku is a guy that also could wear the A. He has experience now. He could be an A. I don't know. I wouldn't make him a captain, but he could be an assistant for you. Uh, he's a guy that would be good for youngsters. He plays throughout a lineup. He's going to teach everybody how to come into the league and also adapt to whatever role they're given. Um, I think he's a forward that would play great for an expansion roster. And he's not that he doesn't play great for Colorado, for, for 
Colorado who said he plays great for them. He's just going to be buried in the lineup if they sign people that people expect them to potentially go after in this free agency uh, or in the trade market because they're, they're rumored to be a team valued in the trade market because of the cap space they have. They would be able to take on somebody in the trade market that you would then have to pay because they have cap space. Uh, here's me. I'm playing devil advocate here. Devil's advocate here. I'm Seattle in this situation. Uh, I'm going like Donskoy. Okay, I like Donskoy. Don't get me wrong. But Mr. Sackick, <laughs> you've got a guy like Brian Graves out there who you can't seem to protect right now. And uh, I definitely want him over Donskoy in a big bad way. Uh, so if you want me to take Don Scoy, you're going to have to give me something because otherwise I'm taking Mr. Graves or Mr. Gerard or what have you rather than him. So what exactly are you looking at? What, how are you going to help me out here? Or do you think it's possible that they like I, I I'll, I'll bring something up here while you continue on. You've got Bowen Byram and Connor Timmons almost ready to play here. If they show well, maybe they look at getting something for a guy like Ryan Graves, you know, getting another yeah. first and stuff like that. You think that's possible? No, that's uh, highly possible. I think he would have to – he's a guy that really played – everybody thought he would be a solid, steady Eddie defenseman. He played up to that even more this year. So I don't know if people would give him a first – just based off of one year of playing better than they thought he would even be. But you could definitely get a very good um, teams. Like, uh, like I mean, like, by a good team, I mean, like, a team that stinks. Uh, second round pick. So, like, a high-value second, at least, um, for him. So, like, a team like Detroit, if you were going to trade him, would be like, well, hell, we need defensemen that are steady that can help some of our guys to get them to know how to play freaking defense. To, to teach them how to play defense because we have some youngsters that are better offensively than they are in their own end a little bit. That works out. Obviously, Toronto is a good team that might give you something for them because that would work out perfectly because they have no I think you barrel, could get the first out of Toronto. Yeah. But you also, yeah, then your first, you could also probably get a first out of Toronto because they're thinking their first is not going to be that valuable. Because Toronto obviously thinks they're going to be a good team, so therefore, not, obviously all first-round picks are valuable, but in terms of just the value and weight, they're going to be the end of the first round if all things go well for them. And adding Ryan Graves, which adds toughness to your defense, you would think will help you to make all things go well. So if it doesn't, then you're immediately having issues. Um, so that's a team that I would look to to move in potentially, if not a developing team, because if you're – not going to get a first pick. You're probably going to get. You can probably get a beginning of the second round pick from like the Kings or the, um, well, maybe also Ottawa, but also Detroit. Um, I think so. there's going to be a lot of teams that would like to have them, and you can yeah. get a prospect and a first, or a pros prospect and a second from a team like Ottawa, who definitely could use a guy like that. I mean, this guy's six foot five. He put up 26 points in 69 games. Uh, I've that liked him. <laughs> I've liked him in the new since the New York Rangers. Now, you make a good point. He only had nine points in thirty-two games with the Eagles the year before. How is he going to consistently put up twenty-six points in seventy games? He didn't show to be an offensive player up until this point, no, right? So this year, that's what I'm saying. Like he showed he would be a steady Eddie, and then he really excelled this year. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking it would be a second rounder right now. But if you have him play great next year and Timmons is going, hey, everybody, I'm ready. I'm knocking on the door because Byram is probably going to almost be up and make the team, I would think. Uh, yeah. Then they're going to go, OK, well, Graves, maybe we'll move him now because everyone's calling us. Even don't want to move him, but because we know we might not be able to protect him and we would have to give up something for them to take the door off. Maybe we'll move him to get picks, and then that'll help us in the long run. And then also, if you got an extra pick for him rather than taking a prospect, say you got a second and then a later round pick, you might be able to, if you got that later round pick, you now have more later round picks. So you would have another later round pick to give up with Zador off if you then wanted to kind of 
guarantee that uh, they would select Zadorov. That would just give you another pick in your system to have to uh, give up to have them select Zadorov. Yeah, if they were to trade Graves, um, I think it's possible they could get a late first, especially at playoff time. A young guy who is still doesn't have much bargaining power because he's still a restricted free agent uh, is going to have a lot of value. It's going to have a lot of value to a lot of teams. I think you'll get a first, maybe even a mid first, maybe depending on what the situation and what the team Montreal Canadians, you never know what they're going to do. And their defense is porous, a six foot five guy that can move the puck and play who knows what they're going to get. I think you could get a really good player from that. And even then, I would hate having to give him up because I like him that much. But with the expansion team coming up, having those extra picks, like you said, would be very beneficial for protecting the rest of your lineup. Yeah, right? because you would have an extra pick to give up. It's almost like the Flyers, because of Hextall um, having picks, we have an abundance. Uh, we're not going to draw on it much, but I just wanted to say we have an abundance of picks from Hexy to give up for future draft to say, well, how about you take this guy and we'll give you this future third or this future second or this future fourth. Uh, the Flyers, because of Hextall, have a lot of that. I think that's going to be similar if they're smart. Uh, Colorado would go, let me move somebody to get. Now, the smartest thing would be if Zadorov is fire next year and has a very good year screw trading Ryan Graves, you then are probably uh, going, okay, we re-signed Zadorov. We like him as well, but we really like Graves. We're going to sell this guy high because he's playing so great, and then you're going to make the best move you could have made for your franchise because you're able to. And it's not because Zadorov is a bad defenseman. He's a solid, steady defenseman. Don't get me wrong, but it's because he's not. If he plays great next year and plays up, you're going to sell him high and get more value than you would ever get, probably upper value than what he's worth. That will be the best-case scenario for them because then they can protect grades, and they will uh, just have to – it would probably be Don Squid by default then or Groovy uh, or, or something that would become picked by Avalanche. Uh, well, let's say they trade – because they were already going to have Zadorov. They weren't going to protect Zadorov anyways. So they no. would have – they, let's say they trade Zadorov. I don't think you're going to get a first for Zadorov. No, you're even not going to get a first. Ha- even if get, he has a great year. If he has a great year, you might get a second, though. You might get a yeah. second yeah. for him. Yeah. You're still looking at it. depends on if you can get Eric Johnson to wave. But if you've got that extra pick, you can say, okay, Seattle, Eric Johnson, we're putting him out there, but we're giving you a second not to touch him. We're going to protect McCarr, Graves, and Gerard. And then you have, you can, we'll give you, then you got JT Comper or Tyson Jost. You can pick out of all of those guys, or you can uh, maybe take Philip Grobauer or whatever. We, we can, we can, we're not afraid of losing any of those guys. And we'll give you a second round pick not to touch Johnson because we promised Johnson he's not going anywhere. Right. Uh, then if I'm Seattle, I'm like, no, I want Johnson. Then what do you do? Then you got to, I want a first if you're going to leave me Johnson. I want a first. Are you willing yeah. to do that? Are you willing to give up a late first to not touch Johnson? Yeah, so I, I, don't think, I don't think they'll do that. I think what they'll do more likely is if you have to leave a, um, the only youngster you're going to leave exposed would be uh, Graves because there's absolutely no chance in hell you but who's in there and if uh, and you're not going to leave um samuel gerard who i believe would still be allowed to no him. way they're no way they're leaving yeah. gerard. Gerard, you're not going to no you're way. not going to leave gerard exposed who still could be exposed at that point because his modified no trade doesn't click in until 20 um but um the he's a guy yeah i think graves you might also if you leave him out there if you give him a first that's where it would almost look better value-wise, I think. If you unprotect Johnson, because he's kind of teetering at this point of his career, he's still a good player, but he's not Eric Johnson from back when, before he had injuries and all that, when he was actually a good stay-at-home defenseman, a solid, could move on his skates better defenseman. Um, 
if you're going to guarantee him to stay, what would I think look better to fans would say, okay, we're not going to protect Rays, but we're going to give them a pick to make sure they don't pick Ryan because that would be almost where his value equates nowadays, where Eric Johnson's value doesn't really equate to a first anymore, where if Graves does really well again next year, and it's almost like a perception-based thing, and you unprotect Graves, perception-wise to the fan base, it looks better because you go, we're giving you a first to keep this great guy that's young, that's still blossoming, especially if he has a 26-point season again next year. Then you're, then you're definitely going to be fine giving up a first to make sure he doesn't get taken. Um, that would be um, something I would look to because the value would equate more. I think fans would go, that's actually cool. We would see that. Johnson, the only way they would react like that is because he's loved. He's beloved in the town. He's been there forever. Other than that, that's the only way they would react to that. With Graves, it would be the value equates. And I Johnson's think you, not I think if you explained why you're doing what you're doing, because yeah. it really is just the, the fact to get him to say he's going to, you know, unless you can convince him to go, that would be awesome. But now if I'm Seattle and you put him out there and convince him to go, I'm not, I'm probably not taking him, but I'm going to say I'm thing. taking him. It's all going to, what's going to give me the most leverage. I'm going to take him if it's going to give me more leverage. I'm not going to take him if it's not. So uh, I get more leverage if I say I'm going to take Eric Johnson. Uh, I get more leverage to, that way. So I'm going to tell you I'm going to take Eric Johnson so you, I can have as much leverage as possible. And if Graves is out there, I don't know if I want a late first. I want Ryan Graves. A late first might not give me a Ryan Graves type player. I got Ryan Graves. I want Ryan Graves. If he's out there, I want well, him. You probably would give him if Graves does what he now. If Graves, like I said, goes back to being his great defensive mind himself and doesn't produce the points, he's probably going to be more worth that top tier second than a late than a first. Uh, if he, because producing the points he did at twenty six and the game he plays is worth a first. If he's not producing those points, he's worth maybe a late first, but definitely a second. That's kind of where he made himself get in the first round conversation because he outplayed what people thought his stock was. Um, that's uh, So he is going to have to continue to do that. If he continues to do that, then yeah, you that that's a good point. But I think you would throw in a different forward at that point and you would say, well, do you want Tyson Yost? as part of this and then that's why i said if you're gonna leave ryan graves out i want to first and tyson goes and yeah. then i will do and then i will i will just take that and then if graver I, only has ryan Jost will be my pick and i'll take the first yeah. you see what now, i mean mm -hmm. now yost is a guy colorado might be no no sorry yeah. ryan jost wouldn't be my pick i'd still have another pick i'm taking ryan jost and graves to our first to stay away from graves and then i get another pick but I don't get to pick like from everybody. I can't pick jo Jonas Donskoy if I want or whatever. You give me a pool of people that I can pick so I can get another player from my roster. Yeah. Maybe Vladislav Kamenev. I wouldn't mind giving Kamenev a shot to see what he can really, really do. I don't think he's really got a shot. We were talking about guys like Hathaway and stuff. Kamenev could be put in that spot. Yeah, no, he's a guy. It, it, well, first of all, Coming at it from Colorado's perspective, since he's really buried, if that's somebody Seattle's interested in, and especially if Graver has a great year next year um, and you want to keep him, or just has a great defensive year, so Seattle doesn't look at it as highly because his defensive numbers are high, but they don't look at it as highly because of offensive, and they don't make it deemed a first. If you can get away with the second and Yost, that would be something that would pretty good for uh, Kyle Rod to, or to protect now, to protect Ryan Graves from yeah, the draft. If, yeah, if you could yeah. if uh now Kamenov, there's no way you're gonna be able to get away with a second in him because they haven't seen anything of him. He hasn't really been in the NHL that much yet compared to then you'd uh, have to give a higher player there. Yeah. yeah. Like a then I want Donskoy. You get I'll, I'll take the second, Yost and Donskoy to stay away from Graves. Maybe yeah. that's not bad. 
Although it would be interesting what Vegas or not Vegas, what Seattle thinks of Kamenov because if he plays, obviously, like we said, this is why it's so interesting doing this a year out. If he comes in and kills it next year in the minors, and then gets the tab and he forces himself to be called up and looks pretty decent in the NHL, well, then his value is obviously significantly better. So it's like that's why it's so interesting to even if he does great in the minors because we just talked about he's not really needed in college especially if they sign more people, he's definitely buried. Then yeah. you're still going to look at it, and that heightens his value. So either way, it's why it's so interesting doing it a year out because someone like him so interesting, he hasn't been able to figure it out in North America to the extent you would hope yet, but he's still a guy that's only 23. Everybody, um, Russ Cohen, who uh, does stuff, is a big prospect guy and Philly really talks about it a lot. Everybody that he learned from doing his prospects over 15 years, everybody develops at a different rate. You can never judge somebody based off of like how they say, don't judge a book by his cover. You can't judge a prospect based I, off. Of I've been prospect. promoting Kamina for quite some time. Uh, I still think he has upside. I like him. I like him. I think I'd like to give him a shot if I'm Seattle for sure. No doubt. And about if you're it. Colorado, you would be willing to do that because of the depth and the money you have to spend on other people. So. Right. I, I'd be willing to go. Like I said, if you, First, Ladislav Kamenev uh, to stay away. The first to stay away from Graves. I'll take Kamenev. And why not Matt Nieto? That would you know, work. Matt, Matt Nieto is not, but he's a UFA next year, so that doesn't really work. Well, you could uh, have, a, like I said, the, the way you could fix that is if you negotiated how teams do, they sign somebody right away. And then you would be able to still make him, um, because obviously I don't think you're going to give Nieto a no move, obviously. So you would make him available, or if they wanted him in a trade, then you would just give him to them in a trade. That's a way, there's a way to get around uh, being UFAs if that's the player that they wanted, because you can still figure something out. Or uh, we just talked about how smart Sockett's been. He might sign him for another one-year deal if he plays solid next year, so he's not a UFA, and then it gives him more leverage because then he's not a UFA. He still has that extra year. Uh, we talked about how savvy Joe Sockick is. That's the kind of savvy thing to do to be like, people are going to look at that next year like, oh, what the hell do we extend Matt Nieto for? We don't really need Matt Nieto. But then they're going to look at it and go, oh, that might be to try to get them to be like, oh, well, we give you him also in the for the expansion. You're not going to take him. So it yeah. could, that, that could be a savvy thing to do. And it also just, he, he works well in their lineup. It wouldn't be a bad idea to give him a contract anyways. He's probably a $1.5 million guy right now. Uh, yeah, so you got to remember, next year they're going to be going for the cup, right? So that makes a lot of things. Adding grades in your lineup, trading them before doesn't really make much sense. You don't get too many chances to go for a cup. And Colorado is ready right now. We haven't even taken into, and we're going to, this is why it's going to be an ongoing series. We haven't taken into consideration that Colorado is probably still going to be adding to this lineup yet, mm -hmm. which is going to make yeah. things more difficult yet. They've got tons it's of cap so room next year. They can, they can sign free agents. They can do all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be very interesting to see which direction that they I go. I was going to say now. that. We didn't mention a veteran defenseman Colorado has that they could look to trade for picks as well. Um, he's a two-time cup winner with experience. Ian Cole had 26 Cole, points yeah. in 65 games and actually looked really solid this year for them. Uh, he's on the last year next year. If there's anybody I would think that they might move, uh, if they're a contender, if Connor Timmons and guys are ready, it might be him over Zadorov because yeah. if you. But the problem is, I don't know if you would move him unless you get a great trade. Because yeah. if you get a good trade from you, move him. But the other reason was the only way I'm moving him before the expansion, if I don't re-sign him for an extension, is if I get a good trade. Because why would I trade a two-time Cup winner when I'm trying to win the Stanley Cup? That also yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. Doesn't make much you sense, want to no. keep the experience. But I also yeah. think if I'm Joe Sockick and Ian Cole's doing what he did this year, next year, he's not going to be – what did he get paid for? Uh, he got paid 4-2. At, mo at most, that's the most he would still make. I think he'll make less than that now. But he's not going to get more than that. So if you want to be smart, that's a savvy thing. We saw how Vegas value taking good veterans that are good leaders, had experience – 
you might be able to convince Seattle. Well, not convince because Ian Cole's a good defenseman. Convince isn't the right word. You might be able to get Seattle to take Ian Cole because they go great experience. He's coming off of two straight years of looking very good defensively after looking after Pittsburgh got him. Like we talked about guys playing above their stock. Ian Cole played above his stock uh, most of his career. Um, I know he like he got he got drafted in the first round, then fell off, and then became his stock kind of reset. And then when his stock reset, when people were like, "Ah, oh, Ian Cole, St. Louis, he didn't make it as much as we hoped. Uh, he didn't do all good." And then that reset his stock. Once his stock reset, all of a sudden he kind of proved people wrong in Pittsburgh. So he's a guy that. I think since being able to kind of prove people wrong in Pittsburgh and use that mentality, isn't the worst person to bring into a, into a uh, rebuild and a, into a expansion because he already has the mentality. Hell, I was picked first. I fell off a cliff a little bit. I figured it out. And because of people saying, doubting me, that's what made me rise to be as solid as I was. So I'm going to want to, I'm going to want a lot in return for taking a guy like Ian Cole. Not that I, I love the guy, but for a Seattle franchise with this much talent available on a roster, you're going to have to pay me a lot, a lot, a lot to take a guy like Ian Cole. I'm going to want a pretty big package. But we'll come up this, because we didn't even get into, there's one thing that they could do, and we'll maybe really quick here. They could offer their first and something and Grubauer. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's the yeah. thing that they could do. They could offer their first Gr- Philip Grubauer and say like a Ladislav Kamenev or something like that. Uh, you they get they get their goaltender. Uh, you got so you get to protect your whole roster. That'd be freaking awesome. Uh, even though Grubauer, I know Grubauer is all like it's going to depend on what he does next year. Grubauer could make convince them that. They can't afford to lose him next year. That also depends how Francois does next year, though, because obviously, if uh, like we talked about before the podcast, um, most people that follow hockey in depth shouldn't be surprised that he was a late bloomer because he did very good in checks two league, checks one league, which is the Monks' older competition. Then went to the KHL and did great before coming here. If he yeah. continues to progress, even if Grubauer does really well. You're just Joe Sock is just sitting there going, yes, 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 yes. It's like that. Yeah. It's like that old TV show. I forget yeah. what cartoon that's from, but it's like yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and he's just, because he's going great. I have my starter in Francois. Now I have all the value in my backup, yeah. so I don't even have to worry about protecting all these other people because I'll just get rid of these guys. And the better like, Grubauer and, does, yeah. the less he has to give up. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's a he might great have to way give up. If he does great, he might not even have to give up a first because how well you just said he was doing. Exactly. Potentially, yeah. If he does yeah. that good and Francois does that good and you're still going to bank on Pavel because Ruby did that good in, like say, 38, 39 games and yeah. Pavel still played the workload, then you're going to be like, well, this is the best case scenario we ever had. And you're going to yeah. make Colorado. And then with the money they have, this team's going to be a cup contenders for years. Uh, this team is going to be soccer. a cup contender for years. And thank you very much, Joe. Joe, this has been fantastic. I'd also like to throw in that Seattle could take group. If he's that good, Seattle could pick him just to trade him for a first to a team that wants a number one center. So, that would be the optimum for Colorado here. And it almost would be unfair if that happens because this lineup is stupid. This lineup has got one cup in it at least. Well, boys and girls, that's our full 42%. Glad you stuck with us through this. And we're going to have tons of these. We're going we're gonna to do one for every – and over time, we'll just keep on doing them. And we'll go back and watch these later when – Maybe we have some sort of a program together and we're able to talk about this all day. That would be fantastic. Wouldn't that frolic be amazing? By the way, hit the subscribe and the bell. Uh, I have BPAL picks. I'm on with him, with po- with Joe, with podcasts all the time. I'd highly recommend you check all of his workout. I, uh, he's fantastic. I'm going to be on with, uh, with Jamie Basco tonight. Jamie Basco is the one that brought Joe to me. Jamie Basco is fantastic. Check him too. These are some of the best minds in hockey, and you're getting to hear them.
for free every day. What else you doing, Joe? Anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I kind of covered at the beginning. Like I said, the podcast, you're so gracious to be on all the time, or True Philadelphia Sportscast. Uh, you, it's spelled out on Twitter, and uh, it's not spelled out on Twitter. It's spelled out on Instagram and Tumblr. Twitter, it's true underscore Philly sport. And then me, myself, is at JJ Boer 26 on Twitter. And as I said, you shouted out Jamie, Flyers Nitty Gritty team, and yep. uh, Pub Sports Radio for your baseball Steel cover. Flyers. Steel yeah. Flyers, everybody. Don't and forget Steel, Steel Flyers. Yeah, forget Him Steel. and his wife do amazing together. Fantastic. Have a great day, everyone. Lots of love to you.